Hello there, and welcome to Cooler Talk, the show where me and some co-workers gather around the water cooler in the break room and discuss past WWF pay-per-views. In this episode, me, Two Light Brew, and Ripper the Kid discuss Royal Rumble 1992. Let's go! Yeah, man. So, this this Orient Express versus the New Foundation. Can anyone give me insight about the origins of the New Foundation? Okay. Um, well, uh, during that time, you know, um, before the New Foundation started, you had the Hart Foundation, which was uh, Brett and Jim. Right. They end up splitting, and both end up fo focusing on singles careers. Hmm. So um, I think during this time, Bray either won the WWE Championship or the Intercontinental Championship. I think it was won the IC. I don't. What you say, Tulai? Yeah, it was the IC title he won. Yeah. Okay. And um, this was also during a time where I believe where um, Owen was just getting his big push. How I remember it, uh, I think they kind of put the on with Anvil. Like I said, he was uh, just pretty much breaking in, and they were trying to get him a little bit of a push. Oh. Um, then after New Foundation, Anvil and Davy Boy teamed for a little while too, but I can't remember what the team. Was. They had so many foundations: New Foundation, Heart Foundation, the Heart Foundation. Was it like three or four of them? Uh, I want to say it was quite a few. Yeah, there's a lot there. <laughs> this, yo, because when you get all of them together, they were the New Heart Foundation. Ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Doing the most. So, <laughs> yo, but, but can I mean, we can we address like the eighties? Like the ring gear was over the top, <laughs> like. <laughs> The fluorescent colors, the checker designs. I thought it was looking at a kindergarten art project. It's like that was, that was that was the '80s in the U.S., bro. You I'm telling you, <laughs> it was neon and fluorescent and, and crazy the different colors everywhere. Yeah, yeah. They probably thought they were doing it too. <laughs> oh man, uh, you know what? They say fashion is coming back, and I hope that one just doesn't come back. Oh, that one needs to die forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yo, but that, I think that was the first time I ever really saw Owen Russell. Like, I didn't know he was so athletic and acrobatic. I thought he was more like technician style, like his brother. Oh, no, he was a freaking nature athletic. Oh, yeah. Um, when he first started, I mean, you know, he was that acrobatic kind of dude. But, I like. Thought later on into like getting into the attitude era that's when he became more of the technician kind of guy. ah okay okay yeah you so, early 90s he was just breaking in he was relying on that athleticism he didn't have that in-ring skill that he ended up with that makes a lot of sense actually so so did he get all that stuff from the dungeon or did he have to go to like japan or mexico because i didn't know the dungeon did like that high flying type stuff I think that just kind of came naturally to him, honestly. Mm. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the entire history of his family, you know, um, especially being in a dungeon with so many great wrestlers who have had the chance to learn and hone their skills at. Yeah. You know, I think it was something that did come natural, but, you know, it's something that when you just allow people the creative mind just to go in and have fun, I think he actually was able to show that. That's a good point. That's a pretty good point. Okay. You know one thing that I don't miss from 80s wrestling? The long <laughs> headlock holes. Like five minute headlocks. <laughs> Just, what's going on here? Oh, oh man. Stop in the wrench that down. The oh, go ahead, brother. I was saying. Five minute headlocks with the foot stomp and the wrench down every thirty. Yeah, seconds. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Staple of the eighties. Everybody tried to show off their strength. Yeah, 
Oh, I actually miss seeing Tessa strength. That was my favorite thing as a kid. Especially oh, man. when you have guys like Hogan, you raise one hand, and then the villain raises his hand, and then they raise the other hand, and then they're going at it. I thought that was so dope. Or the villain gives him the boot to the stomach on the second one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, good times. And then you got the long lockups. Oh, man. Yeah. That, that yeah. <laughs> this quintessential 80s, long lockups. And then also, too, what I noticed in these tag team matches, there was a lot of um, referee distractions so they could do shenanigans. You know, that comes with any time Mr. Fuji is one of the managers. Correct. And I think he has got to be one of my all-time favorite managers. And it's oh. just based on his actual gimmick because it was from the, um, I'm not sure if you watched the 007 uh, series with James Bond, but mm -hmm. his character was built after Odd Job. Oh. He played the team. What do you mean? They made him look just like him. It's true. It's yeah. true. <laughs> so that already goes a long way for me. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I, I wasn't really big on um, the Orient Express. However, I do know when before the WWE became such a nationwide phenomenon, they were very successful in different territories. Huh. Oh, I forgot about territories. That makes a lot of sense, actually. There was there was the Orient Express, Midnight Express, Rock and Roll Express. Am I missing any other expresses? Um, I'm sure we are. There. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we're probably missing at least 30 different expresses. Everybody needed to have some kind of express. Yo, what was um Shawn Michaels and, and Janetti's tag team name again? Uh, I think they were the Rockers. Okay. The Rock. So was Shawn Michaels in any kind of express or am I making that up in my head? Uh, I think that's in your head. <laughs> it depends on however you want to look at it, if you ask me. That he could have been, depending on uh, the DX Express. Oh, yeah. Well, I wasn't thinking of that. I was thinking more new gen, but yeah. There, that's an Express. <laughs> you know, one thing that I realized from um, Anvil's and, and Owen's finisher, it looks exactly like Enzo and Cass's finisher. You know when oh, Enzo jumps off the top rope and Cass slams him down? Oh, yeah, yeah. The like, thing with, that gets me, you know... Jim was more like a powerhouse, but he also had quite a bit of agility, and he was pretty. He's a very good technician as well. Oh yeah, you you can't help but be a technician if you come out of the dungeon. <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's standard. <laughs> Stu Hart will put you through the ringer. I'm telling you. Oh man, it it was pretty good. I mean. Just re-watching it, I was like, this is why I love Jim. And, you know, I don't want to kind of break away from the match that we're focusing on, but whenever you get Jim mixed with either Brett, or Owen, or Bulldog, you know, it kind of reminds me of Hulk and Animal, Legion of Doom. Oh. Okay. What'd you say, too, Lad? So that's my favorite tag team of all time. Oh, I can't wait till we get to that match, actually. But um, I probably need to check out more of Anvil's stuff. Like I, 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 like I said, I completely miss the majority of the new gen era. So like seeing this pay per view for the first time in its entirety, it was like kind of like eye opening to like some of the gimmicks, how people work in the ring, and all that kind of stuff. So I would be very interested in seeing like the tag team dynamics of all the heart foundations and see how they play off of each other. Well, there's no denying it. Um, I think Brett and Jim also, because they were the tag team for the longest, you know, I think they had the natural ability to kind of just go with the flow. Mm -hmm. um, but there is no denying the other skill. I mean, each match you watch, it, it's very incredible on how you just seeing those, any version of the tag team at that, just seeing how they work. Yeah. Wait. At, at one point, did any of the foundations have beef with each other, or am I making that up too? 
They uh, did. Right, no one had beef a lot, actually. I would yeah. always feel treated second best in the world, brother. It was kind of always normal. Yeah, it was always like Owen was kind of, he had to fill Brett's shoes. And, mm. you know, when the new ended up forming, that was because of the split between Jim and Brett as well. Um, oh, okay. I know Owen and Bulldog had a B4 um, short stint. Before they found, before they did the New Heart Foundation. So um, I did. I do remember there were times where you know there were different parts, and then especially after Brett left after the uh, Montreal screw job. Yeah, over the uh, incident. Yeah. You know, Owen did begin to receive a push, but I don't think they actually treated it as him becoming champion. You know. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but all in all, it was a decent match. That was a, a nice opening match, and then we had um the Mountie versus Roddy Piper for the IC title. Roddy Piper cuts a mean promo. That was the first time I'm a, I'm embarrassed to say this, but that was the first time I ever saw like Roddy Piper going to work on the mic. He was hella passionate. Uh, he is one of the best ever on the mic. Oh man, you don't have to convince me. Just that little snippet I saw. <laughs> Instant fan. You know what? Um, anytime you give Piper the camera, I think he just goes on his own flow. Yeah. And it works tremendously. You know, there probably isn't any greater villain or heel in WWE history than Roddy Piper. But when he walks out towards the ring, you immediately love you just love his energy. Yeah. I yeah. Think so. I think it's ridiculous. What's ridiculous? <laughs> his charisma as soon as he comes oh, yeah. out to the entrance. Oh, yeah. Like, you, you could listen to how the entire arena exploded. And a, you got to keep in mind, you know, he was still a heel during this time. Yeah. It's like, you know, I, we want to hate him, but you just love you just can't help but love the guy. What you about part to say, Two Life? And I think part of Dean Ambrose was uh, stolen from Rowdy. Oh, yeah. I can definitely see that. Uh, yeah. Now that you mention it, I can definitely see that. He, he was the original fringe lunatic. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. My my thing with this match, though, I would definitely have to say it was a match to just make it a, a transitional title from Brett to um, Roddy Piper because the Mountie would not be believable as Icy Champion. And that headlock, he tapped out a little too quick for me. All just tragic. I don't... He had no place being in there. <laughs> I, think, I think they were going with the whole good guy, bad guy formula, so they needed a bad guy to pass the belt on. At that time... Uh, Piper was a face, right? I would think. Um, I don't think so. I don't remember. I don't really majority, but he, he did have some face stints there. Because if I'm correct, the Mountie, um, did he low blow uh, Brett for the title and then Piper came to save him? And So I think he was kind of facious or maybe anti-hero? Yeah, I would probably say anti-hero at the time. Okay. Ultimately, I wasn't um, very high on the Mountie just as a superstar. I don't know if it was just a gimmick, but his in-ring performance didn't really, you know, amaze you. Mm. You get Roddy Piper in the ring, you know, he, he amazes you. So I think when you, and not to mention, you know, during this time where there were so, a lot of superstars who had the creative control of who they would drop a title to. Oh, so I think you know, as you were saying, with with it being a transitional title, where Brett may have not wanted to lose the title to Piper at the time, but at the same time, was the Mountie was he the best person that they could have picked? <laughs> I see your point. <laughs> who, who else would have been a, a good replacement for the Mountie, in your opinion? Ah. Uh, Let's see, we're, we're, we're talking early 90s. Um, yeah, 92. 
Just think of who was all in that rumble. Jake the Snake. I would have, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they would have want to put the title on Jake just to lose it right away either. Ooh. Well, so I think they chose someone like the Mountie because they knew it was just a holding spot. Yeah. But if you think about it, if they had put it on Jake, they could have probably like built up a nice rivalry between him and Piper. Oh, man, we're talking about two of the largest villains going at it. Yeah, well, they already had the rivalry going with Mancho and Jake at that time. Oh, yeah. Is that because um of the whole snake incident, or was that before or after? I don't know. No, the snake incident I... happened right before that rumble. Oh. And wasn't it... um? Something that he did to uh, Miss Elizabeth as well. Yeah, that we put the snake. He put the snake on her when he was ringsider. Is the way oh, I remember. Okay, okay that and makes a lot of sense. From a lot of shoot interviews that I've uh, researched, you know, I don't think that was actually the way it was supposed to be. Oh, putting the snake on her—that wasn't supposed to happen. Right. Right. And then I think they said the snake bite that. Um, Damien gave to um, Randy Seb. I think they said that was real at the same time as well. It looked real. <laughs> Did you see oh, it? Yeah. No, it was not planned. You can't fake that. The, the snake doesn't know if it's a work or a shoot. The snake is being a snake. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. And then, you know, it also had The Undertaker coming to save um, Miss Elizabeth in the chair shot um, right before that as well. So I think Undertaker was receiving the push as a face as well. Oh, they had a lot of things going on. Yeah. I thought in, in 80s, 90s, Undertaker was straight heel. Uh, immediately coming out, you, we did see very large heelness from him. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, like during this specific storyline, I think yeah. him and uh, Jade the Snake end up tag teaming together once. And then when everything started boiling down to Macho Man and uh, Jade the Snake, we kind of seen where Undertaker end up getting involved. So Miss Elizabeth didn't get hit with the chair uh, uh, behind the curtain. Man, I have so much stuff to catch up on. Y'all making this sound really exciting for me to go back and watch stuff. <laughs> Oh man, like I told you, brother, th this was my era, so I, I feel glad to say that you know I have seen these tremendous superstars where it wasn't so many heel face turns as it is nowadays. Oh yeah, that is true. Cause like if you were a heel, you were a heel for years. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Bushwhackers versus the Beverly Brothers. Who the heck are the Beverly Brothers? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what is going on here? Never heard of this team before in life. Um, if you ask me, this was the match where you just had to fulfill some kind of tag team. I agree. Because the Beverly, the Beverly Brothers, I don't think they actually worked or panned out too long. Um, especially like for their WWE stint, mm -hmm. but they were one of those territorial tag teams. Oh. Okay. Okay. You know one thing about the 80s I realized watching this pay-per-view as well? The What's amount that? of managers they had. It was like a staple, and everyone had a gimmick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Late early, early 90s, tons of them. Tons of managers. I was like, wow, I forgot how many there actually were. Yeah, I mean, That's just how... about everyone had a manager. Yeah, yeah. So, a lot of people were broken in. They started off as managers, and then some of them got in the ring. Like who? I know that's true, but I can't think of any right now. First one off the top of my head would have to be probably Virgil. <sighs> Virgil. Oh my, I got a comment about Virgil in the Rumble that surprised me, but I don't want to hop ahead. But I, I thought Virgil was just like a, um, a lackey. I didn't know he was a manager. Uh, I mean, I guess he was technically a million dollar man's lackey, but he acted as his manager pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Um, the only other yeah, one. Yeah, we him as well. The only other one I could think of was DDP, but that's WCW. Yeah. 
for the diamond mine. Yeah, yeah. But you know, um, I think also you know a lot of those managers at the time, they had previously had their in ring career as well. Hmm. Oh, like I knew yeah. Fuji was a wrestler before he turned manager. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I forgot about that. Okay. So, so I I guess it's a way to kind of keep their career going. I can appreciate that. Yeah. You think the the current product could deal with more managers, or that was just an error thing, and just do your own thing now? I I can see the need for managers. However, you know, if you're gonna be, I think with that you have to either be face or heel, and then just go with the gimmick. Mm. I because think because a lot of these guys, you know, either you were a face or you were a heel, and your manager helped you guide to that path. Agreed. I think Heyman could do it for stable. I think they were trying to do that a couple years ago, but it didn't really pan out. Like the Alpegan family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, in WCW, Heyman did have a, what you call it, dangerous alliance, right? Yeah, he had the Heenan family in WWE, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, man. The the bushwhackers though. Can we talk about that forty minute entrance? Licking everybody, <laughs> getting hepatitis C. It's like, this is crazy. It's licking random people unsolicited. Hey man, that was the bushwhackers. <laughs> Luke and Butch. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I used to walk around my living room doing the arm thing. <laughs> yeah, big time as a kid. I can see how that would be fun, <laughs> especially like as a as a child growing up. That that was one of my favorite tag teams as well, because they were so unorthodox. You couldn't really plan for them. Mm, I can see that. Yeah. So it's just thinking about it. You know, um, uh, think the Bushwhackers were kind of a same kind of unpredictable faction as the Wild Samoans. I've never seen them wrestle. Oh, man. I feel like I'm missing out. I've never seen them wrestle. Um, I mean, on YouTube, you have a couple clips. Um, I think the most notorious was Jimmy Superfly and Andre the Giant versus the Wild Samoans. Who was and um, that? Was Sorry, go ahead. That was just a match in its own. Super fire Andre versus. So, wait, who is in the uh, Wild Samoans? That would be Alpha and Sika, which are the uncles, I believe, of Rikishi. I think one of them is the father of Roman. Right. Uh, the the entire bloodline is just so long; it's, it's kind of hard to kind of pinpoint everyone. So that's no why. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, it's a dynasty within itself. I'm surprised. Is there a, a collection on the WWE Network, like someone dynasty or something like that? Because that would only make sense. Not what there should be. Yeah. Yeah, because that would be a, a good place to catch up on everything. They're one of the biggest wrestling families along with, you know, the Hart family and um, the Guerrero. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, unfortunately, uh, the Von Eriks. Oh, Texas he, Tornado. I got something about him too in the Rumble. Oh man, when we when we jump to that section, it, it's gonna. Be <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but but for the for the match overall, it was it was a pretty basic match. Yeah. I think it was more shenanigans than actually wrestling, in my opinion. Um, I guess it, they needed to fill up the card. But I mean, that was just more of like an entertainment kind of thing. I agree. I think they were transitioning from just saying wrestling into actually beginning entertainment. Where you have to have the one off factions that will give the crowd so much hype. Yeah, I agree. Now, uh, before we go to the next match, any final thoughts on that one? Said, how about that battery ram, though? The battery ram? <laughs> but the next match, though, 
Legion of Doom versus Natural Disasters. Oh boy. Let me tell you something. This was the first time I ever seen the Natural Disasters like actually wrestle. But just seeing them walk to the ring, they look dominant as all heck. Like, I was like, this is going to be a, a, a brawl. You know what? I I honestly can't wait for Scopely to get them in the game. So they think they're going to put them in together as a tag team or how they had their singles career? I think it would make better sense to put them in as a tag team. But, you know, what I don't understand, if they do put them in the game, I think they'll probably be OP. As powerhouses and or just what? They they ha they both have to be powerhouses. I don't see any. No, no technicians are acrobats? <laughs> <laughs> um, not, was pretty agile for a big man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was thoroughly impressed watching them work in the ring. I know. Was Typhoon end up being Tugboat or was that someone different? Yeah. And then, yeah, I think he was Tugboat. That's what I thought. I thought that's what he was as a single. Yeah, but you were saying they'll be overpowered in the game because of what? Uh, Scopely just has a way of making jobbers OP, and I don't see how that really pans out, you know? I mean, if they were actually like real champions who held champions for a long time, I don't think they're actually overpowered in the game. So it, it brings something different. Mm. They'll probably do them in an event like how they did, like the Hardys. You get one and got to get another one type thing. I wouldn't mind them bringing that kind of event back because these um, month long events have been killing me. They need to chill on that. But, but. Anyway, this isn't about the game. This is about the pay per view. But um, <laughs> that that was a, a smash mouth wrestling match with the Legion of Doom. Oh my god! Oh, what a rush! What? A, oh my god! That that t for me, this was my favorite match in the whole pay per view. It just didn't end the way it did. You know, oh. nobody would get the match with a count out. Yeah, I, I wonder if Vince did that to like quote-unquote, save face for the um, Legion of Doom and still uh, put over the natural disasters? Well, they wanted to keep that rivalry going and get more out of it, I think, partly, too. Yeah. Yeah, I wish it didn't end in a count-out, but it was a, a very good match. I didn't know them big boys could be so athletic, man. Yeah, man. They, they were moving around the rain as swiftly as a luchador. Oh, yeah. The prize, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, I think the only thing that they actually probably lacked during the match was the bit of a technician standpoint. But you got to think about it. They pretty much kept, I think it was Hawk that was in the match uh, for the longest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They kept away from Animal yeah. just to tag out. Yeah, yeah they kept him still alive. <laughs> yeah, man. Just, just four powerhouses I mean, going at it. Pop in there, it was pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That one, Can we that, talk and think about when Earthquake and Hawk were hitting the ropes at the same time, what that ring looked like? <laughs> <laughs> Who was the um the manager for the disasters? Was it Jimmy Hart again? Jimmy yeah, Hart. Man, Jimmy Hart. he had a I lot of tag teams. Pretty much everyone. Basically, I was about to say. In the late 80s, early 90s, he managed... Good bit of people, man. Mouth of itself. I'm like, you know, I don't think there is not one person we can mention from this entire pay per view that he didn't manage. Hmm. Undertaker. I, that's the only one I can think of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was about to Google who did Jimmy Hart manage. But <laughs> Sean Man Hulk, all of them he managed at one point. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Face, heel. Yeah. Mm hmm. Man, one of the signature thing about the 80s, too, is all the yelling in the promos. Like, why are you yelling right now? I'm right here. <laughs> I guess it kind of showed a bit of, you know, they were angry. They wanted to get a point across. Mm. Yeah. Because the interview, um, was it Mean Gene that conducted the interview after? Yeah. 
Yeah, it was. It was. It, I think it was Mean Gene. There was this other guy for the Coliseum uh, thing, but I think it was Mean Gene. Like the entire time, I was trying to focus on why they weren't really talking into the mic. They didn't need to, <laughs> as long as they were. Young. <laughs> I, I got to say, when Jimmy Hart went backstage, and um, I think his actual shoot, because his voice is so iconic, I think he really made the post-interview what it was. Yeah. Good my lawyer. Oh, yeah, yeah, his little <laughs> high pitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I think I'm going to actually get me a megaphone now, just because it, we're just bringing this idea up. Hey, that could be your YouTube gimmick. <laughs> Everybody needs a gimmick, man. Oh, quick question. What's the difference between Sid Justice and Sid Vicious? I think it was during the prom. One of them was WCW, I believe. Oh. It said Sid Vicious was WCW. It was just a take of naming rights thing. Oh. I thought it was like a face heel thing. So even though he was Sid Justice, he was still a bad guy? Pretty much. Huh. The more you know. That he was a large individual. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, wait. Was his psycho Sid I stint guess, before or after Sid Justice? Um, I think this may have been after. After, yeah. Okay. And now this brings us to the actual rumble. Bulldog was eliminating left and right in the early minutes. They, they just set him up as the powerhouse. I thought he was actually going to take it further than he did, like all the way. Was there any doubt to you from the beginning, the way they were talking, that Flair was going to win it? I mean, if, if you because I think in hindsight, because you knew he was going to win, you can look back and say, oh, they were like hyping it up, you know, to put doubt in your mind that he wouldn't win, and then he did. But... Yeah. Actually, I, I didn't know he was going to win until he won it. I was like, because I knew he did win a rumble. I just didn't know it was this rumble. Uh, he he, Flair is very mathematical in how he wrestles. I was just watching him. He picked his spots. He knew when to rest. He knew who to attack and all this kind of stuff. So uh, he 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 played the long game in that rumble. The best endurance in wrestling history. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The definition of Mr. 60 Minutes. Yeah, man. He had, like, a lot of Iron Man matches, if I'm correct. A lot. Yeah. Jeez. Your cardio got to be through the roof to be doing Which that. Which is amazing how much he partied every damn day. <laughs> yep. Space Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm trying to think uh, who else... Pretty much had a good, uh, a good thing going while they were in the room. But I think Sean. I say Sean now his breakout as a solo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was a, this rumble was like after he put Janetti through the window, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. at the bar shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good single showing for him. I'm surprised they didn't actually have like a was Janetti in the rumble. I don't think he was. And if he did, I'm surprised they didn't have a run-in with him and Sean. Uh, I think when this uh, incident happened, I think it was right before the Rumble. So they kind of, I don't know yeah. if it was actually like an injury he was going through. Oh. But they kind of sidelined him from the Rumble. At least that was what the angle proceeded. Okay, probably to sell it a bit more. Probably. Okay. Okay. I could buy that. Can we address the level of tassels on the Texas Tornado's boots? I know Warrior has tassels, but Texas <laughs> Tornado took it to a whole other level. Oh, man. Uh, I'm trying to think of anybody who would be in competition with those two. I think it was pretty much them, too, wasn't it? Oh, uh, it was a Barbarian had tassels, too. Let me Google okay. Barbarian. No, was then Barbarian had like the fur on his on his thing? Let me see. Barbarian WWF. Go to Google. 
that leads me to what was his what was his tag team when he was uh, had Mr. They had Mr. Fuji. Who? The Barbarian. He was part of a tag was team. Warlocks. Warlocks. That was it. Ah. Uh, was it, was it like Power of Pain? No, I think it was Warlocks. Okay. Who was his tag partner? Uh, for I think he had quite a few tag teams as well. In the in the Warlocks, or is it? Oh, uh, for the Warlocks, um, I'm trying to think. It was somebody who else had that kind of same gimmick. And I want to say they may have been in the Rumble. They're just not coming to my mind. And Warlord was his tag team partner. Yeah, I'm, I was just about to say because he popped up on Google. This was a big dude, man. Jeez. Yeah, they were another one that were kind of like a spinoff of Legion of Doom. Good God. Barbarian was huge. You know what gets me every time? The repo man. How he went from that corny gimmick to the other, um, was it Smashing and Axel or Smacks and Ash? Something like that. Was it Demolition? Was that him? Yeah. No. Demolition, was he? Let me, let me check. Demolition, two other guys. Or, oh. Oh, oh yeah, you was Smash. Demolition. Yeah, so like, how yeah. you go from Repo Man to Demolition is like, wow. Talk about a complete 180. I think that was probably the best thing they ever did to <laughs> his unit because I was not a fan of Repo Man. I mean, before the Rumble, he did cut a pretty good promo, mm -hmm. but that was nothing compared to what he did to Smash from Demolition. That's another tag team I need to, to catch up on. From what I heard, they were pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're looking back at it. I think, you know, the 80s, 90s, they were the generation of tag team wrestling. Definitely. You got Nasty Boys. There were so many good tag teams in late 80s through mid 90s. Because at one point, you know, Greg Valentine and I think Flair was the tag team. For they real? Were pretty good. Yeah. I didn't know Flair was in a tag team besides like the Horsemen, which is mostly like a stable, I guess. But I had no idea Flair was in a tag team. Yeah, I, I, I believe they were. Uh, I can't remember if it was WCW or not. Huh. Interesting, it, but it may have been just one of the. Um, it may have been one of the territorial things, mm -hmm. because I think they were a tag team under the Jim Crockett promotion. So I don't think it actually carried over to WWE at the time. That would make a lot of sense. Why? Yeah, I, 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 the uh, tag team titles with Batista at one point too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, it's still an evolution, so I really don't count that. I'm thinking like just straight two people. Like Greg and Ric Flair. Huh? That was an NWA, actually. It's surprising to see the evolution that, you know, Vince took wrestling. Yeah. Bought the company from his dad and completely made it something worldwide. I was right. actually watching something on the network where um, back in the early times when he bought the, the um, company from his dad, one of the people on his production team said that Vince had it in his mind to actually have a wrestling network. And it took all of that time from the early 80s to now, like uh, mid, I guess you'd call it mid 20,000s, whatever, for him to actually get the network. So he was like a visionary from way back in the day. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, he, he has great talent. And, you know, when he bought the uh, WWE from his dad, I think what he took was where it had been so territorial for so long, mm -hmm. he actually wanted to bring it mainstream under one. Yeah, he bought up all the territory to bring it under one banner. Yeah, man. Because was... I think the only other national... Um, was the NWA at the time. So just to think of how he had surpassed the NWA 
who had been around for probably 70 some odd years prior to before he made WWE so globally uh, recognized. Was that because he was pushing more to have the product on cable TV or something like that? I would say so, yeah. Because, you, uh, I mean, in Hartford, Connecticut, I believe, or Stanford, Connecticut, wherever the territory was, how many networks are you actually reaching to say that you want to be so nationwide? You wanted to have your own network. Mm, yeah. See what you're saying. And, I mean, just looking into how things are today, I mean, we have the WWE Network, which at one point in time was actually uh, licensed through cable television. Now, oh, yeah, yeah. We're moving into the age of technology where you can just watch it off of an app. Yeah, so I can say yeah, he's he's a very smart man for keeping the dream, um, especially you know with the run there from WCW. Um, I I gotta commend anyone because he took on Ted Turner, um, who basically just sponsored himself. What do you mean by that? Uh, he actually owned TBS, TNT. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Outside. I said, yeah, I was saying he didn't need no outside money or outside networks or anything. He had his own stuff already. Exactly. Right. And to be honest, if he didn't sell out to Time One or AOL, there would probably still be WCW just because Ted Turner was that stubborn old man that wasn't going to let it die. Uh, but you might have a new, a, a new challenger emerging in AEW. Oh, yeah, I've been reading a lot about it. Um... I think what I've been reading is the way that, don't get me wrong, I believe it's Cody Rose who's um, behind it. Yeah, mm -hmm. or at least the, the face of it for now. Okay. If they can actually compete with um, WWE, I mean, it's going to take a lot. Mm -hmm. But I think he also has the background from and the connections with the wrestlers who are in New Japan Wrestling and some uh those some odd places yeah i think it could be done we just haven't seen anybody compete legitimately with vince since i would say probably tna wrestling and and if barely that i would say right yeah uh, so uh, it, there's a market for it um it's just who can really compete with someone who capitalized the market? This man truly mar uh, monopolized the market, and there's really not uh, another major competition. Right. They got to come in hot and heavy. Hot and heavy. They did a pay per view that was better than the current WWE product. They, um, that's Cody Rose and the Young Bucks. They did it all in. You should check it out. Okay, then okay. that would be the one that I'm talking about. Yeah. Yes. If he learned anything from his dad, I'll give him a good chance. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it was... His dad built NXT, basically. A bootleg NXT? <laughs> no, his dad built that NXT roster. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's... I mean, let's just be honest. Dusty Rose gave pretty much... I would say half of the entire WWE their gimmicks. Facts. Oh, the front roster, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Facts. So it's hard to even take away what he's done. But um, I do know Cody Rose and Vince have had some kind of alleged um, differences because Cody Rose wants to use the pay-per-views that his dad came up with. Oh, and that's what as well. So that, allegedly, there was some kind of issues going on between the two. Allegedly, he'll offer him a contract again, and he turned it down. I think I had uh, heard in the interview, Cody said he wouldn't know how to work for Vince anymore because he's so used to so much freedom, like he he can't be boxed in. I, I can actually see that. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for this. But uh, back back to the rumble. I don't know how we got all the way <laughs> over there. 
Can we address the legitimate pop that Virgil got when he ran out? That blew my mind. He was getting out of the million dollar man shadow finally. He was being his own man. Oh, that's what that was? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. When he originally came running down the ramp, I think the first person he um attacked was it um IRS, I believe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because when I saw that, I was like, okay, was this before he was with IRS and Million Dollar Man or after? I wasn't sure. Cause oh, yeah. I, w- I was still, like, thrown off by the pop. I was like, which universe am I in right now? <laughs> yeah, so that was actually when he became, like, more of a singles uh, wrestler and began began to make a name for himself. <laughs> make a name for himself? I see you being yeah. very liberal. <laughs> I did not know he was a singles wrestler. I'm not even being facetious. I did not know he was a singles wrestler. It was a very short period of time, but yeah, he went on his own way for a while. I would imagine because, yeah, it had to be very short. Well, I mean, everybody has a price for the million dollar man. I'm telling you. <laughs> money, 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 money. But I think the person who immediately wanted to get to the Rumble was no other than Randy Savage. Mm -hmm. I mean, he came out jet blazing. Yeah. (laughs) It makes sense now, like you say, with the whole Jake the Snake um, thing with Miss Elizabeth and all that kind of stuff. It's like, okay, that was like a very interesting thing to see happening, like an angle outside of the Rumble playing into the Rumble. Especially because it, it wasn't something that was planned. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I yeah. think you know there could have been some legitimate um, hatred that was going on at the time, where I think Vince wanted to kind of push it as well, mm. because anything legitimate, I think the people would love it. Kind of like I don't mean to segue from this, but kind of like when Edge and Matt Hardy had the whole beef over Lita thing going on. Yeah, yeah, that that was crazy as well, you know. Especially when you kind of put it mainstream. Oh, yeah. It would have been what it was if he didn't, you know, bring it to the attention and kind of use it in storylines. Yeah. But, you know, people want to buy the truth. And I think, you know, that kind of stems from all of the different relationships where there are tag teams and you have these people feuding with these people and I think it actually buys in and it sells better because it's actually legitimate. Yeah. I would, yeah. Like with the whole Edge and Matt thing, I couldn't tell what was real and what was fake. Like the lines were legitimately blurred and, and at that point in my life I knew wrestling was scripted but I genuinely could not tell what was real and what was fake. Yeah. I, I can absolutely see it. But I, I think also, you know, there was less scripting. You just basically had a match say, this is who your opponent is. This is who the winner is going to be. Mm. And then you just allow them to just go out and be very creative. Yeah. Because at, you could see that there were some botches going on during the entire pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. But they absolutely sold it as well. And it was a very good pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. So, um, what were some of your guys' favorite spots in the Rumble? Um, I I would say when Rowdy Popper came back out. <laughs> yeah, the, making it look like he was yeah. going to win two belts. Yeah, I, I was like, how in the world? Yeah, because at that point, would he have turned face? Good question. I didn't immediately think uh, Flair was going to win it outright. I thought it was going to be Flair and Michaels, just the way they kept hyping them, too. Yeah. I mean, when they brought up Hogan all late, you could have thought, well, man, hey, Hogan is the fresher guy. He could possibly win it, too. Not to mention that was Vince's go-to guy. At, exactly. At yeah. Yeah, I didn't like the way uh, the Hogan vicious things went down. but Oh, man, don't get me started. That was hella petty of Hogan to hold his mm-hmm. hand. And to set them yeah. up for Mania. <laughs> That's why that happened. Oh, see, I wanted to know if it was setting up for a feud. Like, I didn't understand it, but okay. 
Yeah, they, they, uh, the next Mania, that's after the Rumble, they have a match, if I remember correctly. So was, so at that point, did, um, Sid, did he have, like, a heel turn? Or was he always a heel? He was always a heel, in my, that I can recollect. Yeah, I, I would say he was pretty much a heel. Um, I, I can't really remember a time that i seen him face, or if there was a moderate change. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess you could have, if he's going against another heel, I mean, I guess you'll have to root for someone in that instance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I don't think I can re ever recall him being like a true face. I, I think you're right. I was trying to think. There was a pay-per-view that he either wrestled Shawn Michaels or Bret Hart. I can't remember which one it was. It was like probably 93, I think. That was the first time I ever heard of Sid. Was it a SummerSlam? I'm not sure, man. This is when I was back on the island. And that was my, I guess you could say, first foray into the new gen outside of um, Hulk Hogan and Warrior. It was like a good few years. The last time I had seen Warrior Russell was when the Sheik had hit him in his back with like some light or something like that. Oh. I think that's when um, Sergeant Slaughter and the Sheik were on the same team. Right, the, that was the Triangle of Terror. Okay, yeah. That was like a good few years before he got back into wrestling again, and then it was like Sid versus either Brett or Sean at some pay-per-view. And he was matter of fact, I, they Those three were kind of uh, rotating the title around, I would say. Oh, really? The, yeah, the IC uh, title? Yep, because before the, um, before the Montreal school job, Brett always said he didn't want to lose the title to Sean. Oh. And when they actually... He had a genuine dislike for him. Yeah, I've yeah. seen that in shoot interviews, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, um, especially how how things have played out, I think it was kind of interesting because Sean was... He originally came out, he was a face with the Rockers. Yeah. Then when he disbanded, he turned heel, mm -hmm. focused on the singles career, then got into a heel group with DX. And I'm like, you know what? How how did DX have the longevity as well? Like, I didn't really see Sean turning on Triple H. Oh, wait, I thought Triple H turned on Sean. Uh, I'll I probably think, have to go back and rewatch things. Because I think Sean left because he said he lost his smile, and then Triple H cut a promo on Sean and bad mouthed him or whatever. And I think that's when um, he formed the new DX with like um, New Age Outlaws. Okay, well, I thought they were still kind of together during that time. I don't. Think then I think Sean probably just like went and did his own thing for a while. Because we didn't see him for years during that time. Wasn't he away though? I, I'm I'm really sketchy on it, but I think he was away. And then when he did come back, him and Triple H had beef. I think that could be what happened. Hmm. But let's talk about the model Rick Martel. <laughs> what about Rick Martel? <laughs> what was much more of a flashier gimmick than he had? Oh, bad. I don't know. <laughs> Rick Martel. Oh, but Yo, the 80s was full of characters, yo. Like, we're talking about the rock, uh, the new foundation with their colors. Yeah. Rick Martel, probably. I think him and uh, Tito Santana had, like, some of the brightest Definitely. colors as well. Definitely Cito, I mean Cito, Tito Santana. He, he was a, a, a matador or something like that. Right. That's crazy. But there were also some huge guys. I mean, we had Nikolai Volkov. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. We had Hercules. He was a big guy. Um, was Barbarian in there too? The Berserker. The Berserker. <laughs> Barbarian, Hawk, Animal, oh Earthquake, Typhoon, yeah. Sid. Everybody was jacked. 
<laughs> no steroids wellness there. policy. <laughs> yeah, the steroids there. Good God, yeah. Bulldog. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, baby boy. And then when you just throw in, like, the, the eyeball of, like, Santana, Deshaun, Michael, even, you know, Texas Tornado, he was ripped during this time as well. Yeah. So I like, was ripped. <laughs> they were really huge. Yeah, agreed. I mean, I think that's that what the, Vince went for back then. Yeah, land of the Giants. Yeah. <laughs> These. And it would probably still be that way if Triple H didn't have a say so in it. I think there's a lot of people with their hands in the pot. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> now we, we kind of see that Vince doesn't like tag teams. Uh, Allegedly. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what to call it. There was a, a, a stint like a couple years ago when the tag team division was so horrible. It was embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, honestly, I probably get more interest out of like, the new gen tag teams because I guess it was more of a tag team era. Mm -hmm. And then you had the one also who had their single careers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think also, during that time, it would be hard to be a singles competitor. When you have Hulk Hogan, who you know he's getting the push, he, he's going to decide who he's losing the title to. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. So I guess the only other way you could compete was in a tag team. I noticed, too, like the tag team, they had a lot more tandem moves as opposed to tag teams now. It's like people doing single moves. Yeah. Like that I, I can very much see that. But, I mean, how many real tag teams are there that's, besides that's, the ones that are just made up and put together right that, now? Yeah, that's a true point. I would say I would definitely have to say probably the Revival. But the, I'm not the Revival sure. of the Usos? Yeah, yeah, those two. Um, Who else? I guess you could kind of say New Day now just because they've done it for so long together, but... Yeah, but from Inception, yeah. Yeah. But other than that, everyone else is just people that have been thrown together. Yeah, Seamus, Cesaro, Bludgeon Brothers. Who else? The Gallows and Anderson. Although they've been together for a while. Yeah, a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think at this point you have to consider them a tag team. Yeah, I would agree. Just Chad Gable, Bobby Roode now. Oh my God, stop it. <laughs> stop <laughs> it. Just stop. <laughs> I'm just like, they just, oh, like that. we got nothing for you to do singles, so we'll just put you with someone else and make you the tag team champs on Raw now. Oh, my. Yo, why did they split American Alpha? I genuinely love that tag team. I don't know. <laughs> if Jason Jordan ever mentioned it back. <laughs> oh, is he still injured or are he, I don't know what his situation is. Uh, still injured as far as I know. But I mean, like, before the injury, they just, yeah. like, Put them on Raw SmackDown. It's like I don't understand what's happening for a, a, a Kurt Angle storyline. I guess ended up uh, putting Jason Jordan with Seth Rollins, which made zero sense. Right. Like I don't know. Yeah. I, um. I I guess they're just reaching. At this point, you you want to take someone who has the experience and has the presence to hold screen with Bobby Roode, and you kind of tag team them with. A, a up and comer with Gable, but it just doesn't really flow well. No, no, I don't get it, man. So, I just don't think they know what to do with either one of them. That's the problem. I can see. Well, that. what I think they actually should do, I think they should actually make another show, reopen up another brand, whether you want it to be a ECW brand, a WCW brand. NWO brand just open up another show and put more talent out there because you have too much talent on both <laughs> rosters who's not getting enough spotlight. I agree. I agree. This is what all three of us were talking about that one stream we got on at Davies. Like, uh, they're just wasting so many people. Ty Dillinger. Like, could, the list goes on. I mean, 
even guys that are getting, you know, TV time, they still aren't doing what they should be doing with them. Oh, of course. And then, yeah, like, like people, like you said, Ty Dillinger, and all, you know, these names that you see every once in a while that don't do anything anymore. Yeah, like you completely forgot they existed until you see them randomly on TV. Like um, your boy, Zack Ryder. Like... Zack Ryder, Tyler Breeze, none of these oh people my God. Need yeah. TV time anymore. Well, I hope EW gets a few people. Oh, I think they will, man. And I think that's the biggest thing because, you know, you're hiring us to do a contract. If we're traveling 200 plus days out the year, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, we do have live shows. We have dark shows. However, if you're not using us to our fullest ability, you know, it kind of makes no sense. Yeah. I, I think now they're kind of giving the push to the Giants with the Braun Strowman, the uh, Brock Lesnar. Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley. Um, what's the other guy? Um Drew McIntyre. Oh, I love Drew. Yeah. You know, I, I see. Think... I see Braun winning it, and then it's going to be a Drew Braun feud. I haven't been following Raw, so I'm going to take your word for it that they're actually beefing. But if, <laughs> if, if there's a Drew and Braun feud, yeah. I'm on Team Drew. Drew's feuding yeah. with everybody. <laughs> so wait, him and Ziggler aren't a, a tag team anymore. No, he just wiped out Ziggler and. A... Steel cage match a couple weeks ago. Wait, what? Yeah, he's Ugh. trying to be. He's doing like <laughs> he's trying to be like a Randy Orton on Raw, the Legend Killer. <laughs> Wait, where have I been? What? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you just, you just side swipe me. Okay. <laughs> he, he, every week he's challenging somebody. Last week he went after Rollins. So wait, what, what's become a, a Dolph Ziggler? They're not using him, or he just what? Um, they had him going against McIntyre for a few weeks, and then since the Steel Cage match, they haven't seen him, so, you know, oh, he has that stipulations in his contract, he gets time off whenever he wants, so maybe that was setting up his time off to go do his comedy thing or whatever. Oh, maybe. Wow. I, I just watch, whenever the pay-per-views come out, I just watch the packages to let me know what happens, because Raw is just like a whole bunch of commercials and talking on the mic, but I did not know they had legit split up. Yeah. I honestly can't remember the last time I actually seen Raw. Yeah. So I'm with you. I, <laughs> I usually go through and uh, on Hulu and fast forward through the highlights. Just that makes a lot of sense. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Too much talking and advertising, man. Like, I remember I was watching when I visited my mom, I was watching Raw. And she was like, is this a wrestling show or a talk show? Because <laughs> the last time. <laughs> The last time she saw wrestling was like in the eighties, so you know it was like straight wrestling, and now it's like advertise this, social media that, hashtag that. She's like, "What happened to all the wrestling?" I was like, "Yeah, it's in a sad state." Yeah, and Triple H challenged Seth Rollins to become the King Slayer again, or else he wasn't going to give him his rematch. Uh, okay. So Rollins has just been becoming a lunatic. Okay. <laughs> now I'm being here that. The McMahons have gotten together. I guess they're reforming the authority or something. Oh my yeah, God! There's stop. No, there's no longer there's no longer a GM on SmackDown or Raw. Oh. The, the McMahons and Triple H have all united to run SmackDown and Raw now. AEW save us. <laughs> <laughs> but but for it all, uh, but just to finish out this whole pay per view thing, um, uh, Hogan was petty, pulled. Um, Sit out the ring. Ric Flair wins. What becomes of Ric Flair's uh, title run after that? Um, I would say he he pretty much had a short stint thereafter because next thing I know, I seen him back with WCW. Okay. So I, I was up a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I think he actually started at Crockett Promotion and NWA. However, you know, I think when we mention Hulk Hogan, I think we also should mention Ric Flair because those two in their right promotions, mm -hmm. you know, even before Hulk went to WCW, 
and it was just WWL versus um, WCW. I think both of them were at the peaks of their career. Yes. It's hard to have the creative control of uh, who you're going to lose the title to. My thing is, if the fans enjoy it, just let it happen. Well, coming back, what do you speak of, of Flair's title run? The match that never was. The setup for Flair, Hogan, and Mania, and that it never happened. Oh, wow. Right. That would have been awesome. Which which WrestleMania I think would it was that actually supposed to, I think it was supposed to be 92, this one. Oh. That that would have made much sense. Oh. And that's what it was supposed to be, and last minute, Vince changed it for some reason. Man, I got a lot of research to do. That Yeah, that would have made more sense than Sid Vicious. Like the t- I remember the- I was watching something. It might have been a table for three with Flair or something, and he talked about it. You know, the match that never was. He was coming over still kind of in his prime, and Hulkamania is definitely in his prime. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That would be something to actually see, because I think during the Mania, you know, not to kind of spoil it, but I think it was Hogan and Psycho Sid and I think Savage and Flair, I believe. Yeah, I think, yeah, it ended up being Savage and Flair. That is the one that was supposed to be. That WrestleMania was originally scheduled. If you find the, like old promos, it's Flair and Hogan. It's crazy because we're talking about something that could have been. Yeah. You know, especially when we have the competition where both of them are in their primes. Yeah. <clears throat> like, I feel like we'll have another crown jewel moment if if they schedule a match now. Yep. Oh, yeah, they what? <laughs> Brothers of Destruction versus Diaz. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> oh, my Yeah, God. if you want to find out more on that story, uh, just Google Hogan versus Flair and WrestleMania 8. It was supposed to be this one, and there's a bunch of bunch of YouTube videos and I guess they did a bunch of house shows leading up to it and then last second it got canceled. Oh wow. Oh, that makes sense then. Because here's an actual promotion of the promotion I just found on YouTube with them two in the promotion together. Man. It, oh man. Such a rich history to wrestling that I missed out on. Anyway, gents, any final thoughts before we sign off? Like this was a good conversation. No, you need to get to you need to get your lessons in. Yeah, th- does is there a new gen collection on on the network? No, I'm, they just got all the pay per views on there. Yeah, Man. I think you press, they just want you to go back and find it. Yeah, but I think you know for our next discussion, I think what it was WrestleMania eight. If we can mm-hmm. go to that one, see how it kind of leads up into it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, since, yeah, that would make sense. Let me put that on my list. WrestleMania 8. Was that... Which WrestleMania had, like, Piper versus Mr. T? Was that that one, or that was WrestleMania 3 or something like that? I think that was okay. earlier than that. Okay. Two. It was really funny, because that was the round table I watched last night. With, it was Piper talking about how he was never going to, you know, lose to Mr. T, and how he just wanted to actually rip his head off for the disrespect that Mr. T showed wrestlers. Yeah, he did not like Mr. T. Genuinely, he did not like him. Yeah, that was WrestleMania 2 or 3. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, you know, there there were great moments where we have outside people who don't understand the the actual sport of wrestling that, you know, the competitors are putting up. You know, mm-hmm. even though it's script did it and whatnot, these they're still going through the motions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's up to that other guy, whoever they're facing, his job to make him look good, and <laughs> that's no easy task sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on who you're in a match with. Especially when they're doing it with guys that don't have the background and everything else. That takes really takes something. Yeah. Yeah. That's the whole reason I still say Flair's the best because he could put anyone over and still make it look good. Make it look good losing. Yeah, I, I can see that. But you got to be high flying. Wait, I, I think I just messed it up. You're trying to cut remember. a Flair promo? 
Yeah. Jack Line, Limousine Riding. There you go. Will and Dylan, Son of a Gun. There we go. When you said high flight, I was like, Jeff Hardy? Like, what's going on? Yeah, I was like, hold on, that didn't make sense. <laughs> oh my God. Flare and high flying. No, <laughs> no, not at he all. Was flying high. He was flying high every night. No, that's true. That he was. All right, man. This has been a good talk. Man, I can't wait to fill out with you guys again. Yes, sir. So, WrestleMania 8 is definitely the next one.